Hang no. on. Hey, see, you're just doing visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I was just introducing you. So, and my head's cut off there. I do have hair. There we go. Um, so, Monty O'Brien, you are the um, uh, the guru that we all need in our life. Um, you oh, were. <laughs> well, yes. I. I mean, you work for Digital Things, which is you co-founded this um, organization as well. Um, yeah. But I met you way back um, a few years back when we were both. Um, working for a fashion at liberal arts college. Um, yes. And, you know, I definitely think that made me more fashionable. I don't know about you. <laughs> uh, undoubtedly. I really miss being around all that young, creative, trend mm -hmm. forward energy. I have no idea what's in style anymore. <laughs> all I know is it's all on TikTok. That's what I, that's what I I've know. Been yes. Um, and so I, what I was trying to um, just before this um, was talking about how I just want to bring guests on, you know, to talk, you know, 10, 12 minutes, not a whole bunch of your time, but yeah. just to talk about what is happening and how we can kind of get on that gravy train, no matter what industry people are in. A lot of people understand that we have shifted online and my background is in dance and, um, and we have a lot of people on here that are talking about online movement, which includes fitness and sports and things like that. Um, but it could also include, you know, other types of activities that I'm not even thinking about, whether it's hula hooping or, you know, whatever it is. So, um, how can people really push themselves in this space by, you know, navigating the social atmosphere of it all? Yeah, that's a great question. So if I'm understanding you correctly, this is um, somebody who works in movement or dance and they're trying to leverage the social tools, mm -hmm. online tools available to them to grow their business. Is mm -hmm. that right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, my philosophy has always been, and even back when we first met each other, there's a, such a labyrinth of tools available. Mm -hmm. I think one of the best things you can actually do is pick and choose a few to be good at instead of trying to master everything. Right. Even back a few years ago, like when Pinterest first came out and Instagram and then Snapchat and you know, it's like all of these things, um, they all take time and energy. As a solo entrepreneur, you've got to really focus that energy. Um, I think it's great that you are hosting these on Instagram um, and always staying on top of the new features coming out. Like right now, you just mentioned TikTok and Zuckerberg's doing that Zuckerberg thing where he's introduced reels. Like if I answer right now, I'd be hopping on this. And in fact, as a business owner myself, we should really be hopping on all the new features because um, time and again, every time there's a new feature that rolls out, whether it's Instagram Live, Facebook Live, and so forth, the algorithms always favor those tools. So right, right now, Instagram is pushing hard for video content, live video content. So it's really great what you're doing. Um, and that's just a great avenue to reach people, reach the masses. Um, and I think when you're trying to decide what platform to, to settle on, whether it's, um, you know, Twitter or Instagram or Google advertising, you know, the top level goal is, um, first of all, defining your purpose for being there as, as the um, creator right. and saying, okay, what, why am I here? The goal should be to reach your audience. So you really need to think about, is my audience here? I mean, TikTok is great, but I do wonder, are paid customers on that platform watching you? I mean, I think that my hunch would be that Instagram is a better avenue for paying customers. Mm -hmm. TikTok might be a great avenue for brand awareness and getting like the youth to jump on board. If you sell product to like teenagers and young 20 somethings, that's probably a good route um, at this juncture. Mm -hmm. um, but always having that top level goal in mind and trying to like keep it simple, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so when you are working with clients, because I know this is, this is what you do <laughs> you Yeah, know, is elevate, you know, other people in their business. What is the first thing that you kind of like, if you're doing like a brand audit, like what's the one common mistake that you see that, that businesses are, are doing or, or should be doing? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, it usually falls into one of three buckets, I would say. Number one is customer first, no matter what your organization is, knowing exactly who your customer is, 
developing customer personas um, is a common marketing term. I'm sure you're familiar, Sandra. <laughs> but, um, you know, just having a really clear picture for your customer is creating an actual person that you are selling to. So you're like, Sandra, she's this, um, she's this old. She's married with two children. She lives in Los Angeles. So knowing exactly who you're selling to, because that creates a framework around all of your business decisions. So that's one. Um, number two is um, branding from the position of benefits first, like always positioning yourself. What does the customer want? This is sort of marketing 101. So I hope I'm not being too basic here. No. Um, well, here's the thing. A lot of dance professionals come from a standpoint of I need to build myself and my credits and then they'll come to me because I'm the hot thing. Right? right. You know, and it's different when you're trying to gain people as customers or clients or whatnot, because it's not necessarily about you anymore. Right. And, and yeah. the entertainment industry, it is always about, you know, sure. Right. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. the shifting. And so it's good for people to hear this. So I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. <laughs> Hey, and I'll piggyback off of what you just said too. But the third thing I was going to say is the biggest challenge for organizations of all sizes, large and small, is always that analytics piece, the data, and really thinking through, okay, like just kind of mapping out a quick customer journey for a dance instructor. Let's say, okay, I want to put up these videos on Instagram Live. How am I monetizing that? So am I driving them from Instagram to a page where they're going to buy a little like $19 course and then uh, what are all the steps for them to get there mm -hmm. um just being able to measure whatever your marketing efforts are and then for obviously large organizations it gets more complex um but you know for the dance community too um and maybe i'm kind of jumping ahead um i want to emphasize the importance of email marketing which i think gets lost in this discussion about social media but email marketing is so important if you don't even have if you don't have a website even then just at the very least signing up for an email marketing account through something like mailchimp which is free up to a certain point so that you can stay in touch with your consumers and you you keep their data so like the more that these um algorithms change um instagram is like great right now and TikTok, people actually see your content but it's so important to drive people to an email list so that you can always stay up uh, you know, keep up with people, even if uh, the platforms change. So exactly. that's what I say to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's crazy because I've, I've had one person tell me that LinkedIn is a big deal. And the reason why was because people aren't posting as much, like there's not as much noise, people, like, noise there. So Moni, um, I yes. just wrote you on my LinkedIn account and I, I mean, I think I've been a connection, you know, on LinkedIn for, for, quite some time, but I don't always reach out to people on LinkedIn. And someone told me, you need to be more on LinkedIn. And I was like, really? Because yeah. I, you know, it, for me, I, I always used it as, um, you know, when you're applying or when you're looking for a job or, or something like that, <laughs> instead of really thinking about it as that person on the other end of the connection, I don't need to ask them for a job or I don't need to ask them if they're hiring. Maybe yeah. they just introduced me to someone who, you know, might be an agent or, you know, whatever it is, but, but it might be something like that. And so how do you find working on that platform as like maybe an, you know, like a side dish to like your main meal? Like, how do you feel? Yeah. About that? Oh my gosh. I have, um, what I love using LinkedIn for is expanding my own expertise in areas that I don't necessarily know. So uh, to translate this to like the dancing and fitness community, you know, you are all artists. You might not have that background necessarily in every component of entrepreneurship. So the idea is, okay, I want to get from A to Z and what, what holes in my knowledge do I have? Like I know zero about email marketing or whatever, and just kind of like, thinking of LinkedIn as your own like personal network and network of networks and going on there and, and just trying to find someone in your direct network or a friend of a friend, like even saying, Oh my gosh, Sandra, wow. She's doing all these great things. Maybe she knows someone and just reaching out and saying, do you know anyone in your circle who can maybe spare 15 minutes of their time to chat with me about email marketing? And they're using it in that way, not being shy um, for yeah. sure. Um, one thing I, uh, too, when we worked at um, the college, I always encourage um, 
people to go back to their alma mater. Like I know you're a USC grad. And so obviously if you're tagged on USC's page, you can see all the alumni from USC. You can see where they're working, what they're doing. And you know, you've got that personal connection as, um, you know, an alumni from that college. And so I think that's always a great way to network if you are younger in your profession and want to make a connection. Like I know I personally have totally uh, taken time out of my schedule to chat with a young people who like are trying to grow their skill sets because I they're coming from my college so I relate to them you know so right. I, I definitely think LinkedIn is a good platform for that definitely well so what is next I always like asking that question so what is next you, you know we yeah. we talked about reels just like you know that they had that in their back pocket for a while, right? Like it didn't just, like, oh, it just happened overnight. No, they had that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you think of like the the next thing that brands should be doing or organizations or even solopreneurs or all of these people, because it, it really mm -hmm. goes across the board, no matter what, what you do, you know, whether it's a product or a service or whatnot, yeah. what do you think is the one next thing that is like, you know, because the internet shift for a lot of who I talk to, you know, they're on zoom all of a sudden, or they're yeah. trying to do on demand all of a sudden, and, you know, cause they're used to in person. So yeah. as far as an online component, um, what do you hear from, you know, people you talk to is like what they're going to do next or, or what everybody should be doing. Cause I want to jump on that. If you're going to tell me, I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, okay. I think two things I'll, I'll kind of give you an answer for the solopreneur and then the, for, for the growing business. So for the solopreneur, what I think has been so fascinating during this pandemic era that I love so much is actually seeing uh, people jumping on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. It's like there has been an aesthetic shift on Instagram, mm -hmm. especially after all of the social justice movements. It's just kind of like, you know what? Let's just like cut the bull and be real and it's less curated. And it's so wonderful to see it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I love it. I love seeing, you know, people, I think we're all just like, lonely or we're bored we're like you know what screw it i'm just gonna post i'm just gonna go on and so forth so i think from to translate that from a branding perspective it's like using video as much as possible being your real authentic self it doesn't have to be perfect and curated in these highly produced videos it could be uh using tools like we are right now connecting with your audience expanding your reach so i think video and especially live video is so powerful and using Zoom in that way to um, broadcasting to your social platform. So um, exactly kind of what we're doing now. <laughs> and then on the growing side of the business, really investing more in, like I said, data marketing funnel, like kind of uh, scrutinizing your marketing funnel and making sure you can uh, measure every single step. Because mm -hmm. this next whole wave of data is like getting your data cleaned up putting together a clean data warehouse, being able to truly make sense of your data to make smart, intelligent business decisions. And, um, you know, we're going to go into this whole new era too of regulations around data. You're already seeing that in California. And so I think that right now is the time and we're seeing that right now with our larger clients where you've got a little downtime and now they're kind of saying, okay, now we're going to address this data problem that we have. A lot of enterprise organizations are using enterprise software that they have been, you know, that were custom designed for them in the 90s and the early aughts or what have you. And now it's like, now's the time, like now's the time to make those changes because um, in another 10 years, these systems that you've been patching together are going to be antiquated and already are in fact. So I think for the smaller businesses, video and larger video, and then the larger businesses, data, data warehousing, data cleanup and so forth. So That's yeah. Awesome. Well, so how can people find you? Because I, I mean, I could sit here on for like four hours and just be like, yeah, or, you know, so um, yeah. what is the website where we, where I should send people to? Yeah, you can check us out at digitaldames.io. Mm -hmm. um, the link is on our Instagram and we actually have, I have an offer for your um, uh, viewers too, Sandra. Yeah. I didn't even tell you ahead of time. I hope this is okay. Um, yeah. 
we have um, an online academy where we have uh, courses on everything you need to know to start your business. So that's like paperwork and LLC docs and all that good stuff. And then there's a website, build your own website in an hour, uh, website analytics 101 and branding 101. Um, and we are bundling those together for you guys for $20 for your fall. So oh I'll, I'll send you the details and everything. We just wanted to offer a special something. So you can find that on our, um, on our Academy page. So I'll send you the links and yeah. Yes. Happy first. Yay, thank you so much. I, I know that so many people, especially when you're thinking about like, maybe a personal trainer business or, you know, where you're, or a coaching business or even a vocal coach or, you know, all of these people are freelance, you know, they're mm -hmm. literally just like pulling it up from the bootstraps and like using their talent for, you know, to get themselves out there. And the whole focus for a long time with blinders has been me, 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 me. I got to be the best I could be. And now sure. oh, I, have to, I have to find a way to make money off of this, you know, and, yeah. and that shift number one is a business. Like I got to have this other business side and some people don't, they don't do both sides, you know, Absolutely. some are artistry and yes, you know, find myself a business person. It's the yes. same with fashion. You know, you see fashion designers and then you see their backers, right? So yeah. um, artists, it's so hard to use that other side of the brain. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, and, and with with knowledge base like what you have, I think that it's so much easier for people to just kind of take those baby steps and just say, okay, now I know what an email marketing funnel is going to do for me, or now I know that like maybe I should go on my Instagram page and see that the five hundred thousand people that I've gained as watchers, yeah. maybe they all have emails on their account. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah. like that kind of stuff. Like you know, not just shelling out the content but actually going did you like it you know like those kinds yeah. of things so yeah telling leave them wanting more and then lead them down that trail like okay mm -hmm. you're creating something um in addition to whatever they're yeah. watching on instagram yeah, yeah. Oh, i wanted to add to on the topic of audiences too that i mm -hmm. thought might be interesting for your community um you know i recently relocated from los angeles Phoenix. So it's interesting to be back. Yeah, I'm like a suburban like mom now with my minivan and like I and saw your pictures. Family is gorgeous. Just oh, thank you. <laughs> you too. You've got little ones at home. Ugh. Thank you. Anyway, um, but what's interesting, the dance community here is a lot smaller. There's so many fewer choices. And personally, I love that I still have um, like all my favorite studios in LA are doing online and stuff. So that's great for me. But what's been interesting here is how there's this little niche um, of dancers where they are kind of tailoring content to like moms like me who are like not professional dancers. We used to dance, you know, I'm not trying to do like, anything too over the top I like want a good workout and some good music and stuff and so you know I think that's like an interesting way to think about it. that's like such a niche audience and I'm like oh, I wish I, I like what I'm doing right now these classes but I wish the choreography was a little harder so um you know there's like pockets instead of always thinking about that same audience of like a professional dancer who are, is up to this level you know kind of tailoring things to like kids dance or moms who used to dance or what have you so yeah, definitely. Well, there are, I mean, a lot of times I find that um, professional dancers or fitness professionals have been at such a high level that the entry bar, you know, is still high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. the entry level, you're still doing triple pirouettes and throwing yourself to the ground. So, right. you know, um, so it's good to kind of give that piece of advice that like, you know, if you made it a little bit easier as far as, you know, entry bar level coming in, they will stick with you to get to that, you know, upper echelon. Yeah. You yeah. Know, see the growth. So yeah, maybe yeah. you never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I so thank you for taking the time and I will definitely um, hit you up on the, so I get all the details for the, yeah. the fabulous offer that you have provided for everyone in the community. I post this on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, and our Facebook group, um, and obviously on IGTV. Um, and so it, it goes out to a lot of different places. So if you're seeing this on one of those channels, go to her Instagram page, um, which is the at um, digital underscore, no, 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 digital dame camp, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. digital dame camp. And then the website is digitaldames.io. .io. Awesome. Yeah, thank and you. I just love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a lovely day.
Thank All right, you. bye. See bye. you. Bye. bye.